Hi there, so one of the regular Row Along viewers, Roger, got in touch with me yesterday showing me a video of a guy at Orange Theory rowing sprints on a water rower uh, and using different lengths of stroke in order to go faster, okay? Now, I want to investigate this. Of course, you can watch his video first if you want, but I'm going to investigate this doing 100 meter sprints, okay? So I've got 100 meters put into my smart row, because this is the smart row version of the water rower, but I've also got the A1 monitor here just to compare both of them, and I'm going to do 100 meters as fast as I can first with my normal rubbish technique, okay? <laughs> so here we go then in three, two, one, let's go. I'm not entirely sure why I keep counting myself in on all of these sprints. It's not like you're going to be rowing along with me. Anyway, the point here is that on my standard stroke, although it's not amazing, I'm getting close to full compression into the front with shins almost at vertical. I'm a little bit shy because it's a sprint, but I'm pretty much there. Okay, so the A1 had me doing that in 16 seconds. The smart row had it 17 and a half. So it shows that the A1 monitor already is showing me kind of uh, a little bit faster than, uh, than I possibly am. Bearing in mind, Smart Row is exceptionally accurate. So in the video, this guy suggests that by reducing the recovery, you can keep your stroke rate higher and then keep the power going into the machine. So that's what I'm gonna try next. And I don't know exactly how far I was getting forward in that first version, but I'm gonna make sure and go a little bit shorter here, see what happens. So I've started Smart Row. I've got 100 meters programmed in to the uh, A1 and let's go. So. So last time round, I managed to get up to 41 strokes a minute, and you can see already I'm up at 51 just by taking a shorter compression into the front. So it's fair to say that this is a way to get the stroke rate up, but if you look at the pace, it's not really made much of a difference. So stroke rate managed to bump up right about 15 strokes a minute, up to 50 strokes a minute when I was doing that one. Let's see what happens if I dramatically reduce the amount of recovery and rely more on my back and arms. So here we go in three, two, one. So with that reduced compression and much less recovery, this does become less about leg power and much more about the backswing and then pulling in with the arms. You can see the strap on the water rower flapping all over the place because really, this isn't my best rowing style. <sighs> Frankly, I think that idea is a bust. <laughs> that's exactly the same uh, across all versions, really. So, what about on the concept too? Just so you know, the water rower had 18 litres of water in it, which is one litre above calibration. I've set the lever on my Concept 2 to 6, which gives me a drag factor of around 150, which, from a kind of perceived effort, feels the same as the weight of the stroke on the water rower. Okay then, so the Concept 2 is now in place and I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to row 100 metres as fast as I can with my normal stroke, which is partly just so I can get used to rowing in the Concept 2 after being in the water rower. And then I'm going to do it again with the shorter strokes just to see if it makes any difference. So here we go then with the base test in three, two, one. Now, frustratingly, the screen capture on ERG data while I was doing the first two of these rows didn't quite work that well, so you can see that it's paused at 82 meters. Uh, but don't worry, it does give a proper result at the end of this first row, with me rowing as best as I can. Not great though. 17.4 seconds. And a very attractive face I was pulling during it. So, let's move on to going half slide. Now, I know this isn't a particularly scientific test, but in case you're wondering, I did take round about two minutes rest in between these efforts to make sure fatigue didn't play too much of a role. 0.4 of a second slower, but I mean, I'd say kind of half a second plus or minus is probably just going to be due to just variables of the machine. So I'd say that was pretty much the same. So last one to go and then we're all done. You may want to investigate this yourself. If so, do your test, similar to what I just did, and let me know in the comments below how you got on with it, all right? Because I'd be really interested to see if other people find some kind of significant change here in the same way as the comments on his video. So here we go then with the last of the 100 meter sprints. Our data did decide to take a little while to get going, but it does eventually kick in. And you can see that my stroke rate has risen from 45 strokes a minute in my first effort up to 55 here. Now the fellow in the video did get up into the 70s, so I may be underperforming. And that one was identical to the last one. So, what's the outcome? 
I don't know, to be honest. Was that a waste of my time? <laughs> For a start, the guy in the video is an established amazing rower, so possibly he has a lot more upper body strength than me. I'm just a failed lightweight after all. I'm a couple of kilograms heavier than lightweight, so I'm kind of, I'm not that big a guy. So when I'm just using my upper body, I don't have much upper body to be really winding through the stroke. Whereas the guy in the video, he had quite a big upper body, all right? So maybe that's how he's able to make it go faster. Whereas as a kind of almost lightweight-ish, I need my legs to be the power generators. Uh, it's not just about stroke rate for me. So getting the stroke rate up, all it really did was make up for the fact that I wasn't using my legs. Didn't help me at all with power. Thank you so much for uh, spending some time and putting up with me through this test. Let me know how you got on uh, or check out some of my other videos. No matter what, enjoy your rowing, take care of yourselves, be well, bye-bye. <laughs>